Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Vicki. I am our in-house Microsoft trainer. Today we're going to do an in-depth comparison on Office 365 versus G Suite. We are going to take a look at some of their common capabilities and some of the things that they do differently. We will talk about cloud storage, email, support options, and uh, all the other good stuff that they both have to offer. A couple of quick overview points. We both know that the most common things that we're looking at uh, is going to be email and the Office 365 file types. Both of them do have email options. Obviously, we have Gmail, or you can use your company's email. Same as with Outlook. You can use an Outlook.com email, or you can have your company's email branded. They both do have 24-7 support, and they have the ability to create and edit Office 365 file types. One caveat is that some formatting may be lost between G Suite and Office 365. Obviously, if you're editing a PowerPoint document, an Excel spreadsheet, or a Word document natively into Office 365, they will retain their own file types. You can do minor edits with those on the G Suite equivalents. However, sometimes the formatting does go back and forth between them. So something to be aware of if your office already does integrate products such as Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, that G Suite may be a little bit trickier to use unless you were using their entire product line. Uh, going into some more specifics, Office 365 and G Suite were originally created from completely different backgrounds. Office 365 has been around for a long time in various fashions. We are all very familiar with Microsoft Word, which has been around nearly since the beginning of personal computing. Uh, it has obviously grown from there into the other products that we are super familiar with, like PowerPoint, Excel, and the rest. Whereas G Suite started as uh, Google's infamous search engine. From there, it gave the uh, option to start to edit collaboratively with various documents and grew that way. So the background for the two products, despite coming to very similar current iterations, uh, definitely started from different places. And the advantages or disadvantages to those uh, come into play when we start to get into the details. Uh, both Office 365 and G Suite are available via web. However, Office 365 uh, does also have all of its desktop options. The original programs that we're used to, we're used to having right on the computer. Uh, they are also with limited features now available on the web. So there is a Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, uh, PowerPoint that you can do minor edits from the web, share from the web with people that you are working with, and uh, save and share those file types externally and internally. Whereas G Suite, it's online only. Uh, you can, with certain limitations, use it offline, but there are no native programs on your computer that you can use standalone. So that is something to keep in mind if you are someone who uses those desktop applications primarily. Office 365 does have the, uh, the edge there. The other point with that is that the desktop applications are far more powerful than the online equivalents. Online, obviously, you're going to look for speed, stability, ease of use. If you really need to get into the meat and potatoes of those applications, the desktop version in Office 365 is going to be far more powerful. The Office 365 suite is available on Windows, Mac OS, and all mobile platforms, including Windows Phone. I know Windows Phone is kind of on its way out. However, a lot of enterprise uh, companies do still use Windows Phone enterprise-wide. So if you have that integration, keep in mind that Office 365 is available on Windows Phone, whereas G Suite is not. You can use it via web, but it is not natively built in. So something else to consider there. Going on, we're going to cover the big three, word processing, spreadsheets, and presentations. I keep saying Word, PowerPoint, and Excel because those are the ones that we all use the most. In any business, those are the file types that, that people are going to need the most access to. So when it comes to uh, word processing, we have the Microsoft product, which is Word, everybody knows and is familiar with, and we have the Google product, which is Docs. 
Word is very full featured. It is designed to be the premier word processing software on the market. As you know, as I mentioned before, it has been around absolutely forever and has gone through many, many revisions with many features added and bugs smoothed out. And recent versions have added in a lot of the collaborative features that would have previously given uh, G Suite an advantage, but Word does, or the Microsoft Suite does them as well, and in some ways does them even better because there isn't the loss of data integrity when everything is native to the Microsoft product. So Google Docs does have a lovely word processing option. It is very minimalist and it is designed to uh, be very collaborative. So you can share the documents with anybody else in your team, make quick edits, and be able to have a fairly seamless experience that way. However, with, as I said, the uh, Microsoft option, having these collaborative features built in, then you no longer have to risk, you no longer have to uh, weigh the pros and cons of possibly losing some integrity on your data as you move through the, uh, the bridge between the Microsoft documents and the Google interface. Uh, same sort of situation with Excel versus Sheets. Excel is a much more robust, much more complete option. As you know, with Excel, if you have ever uh, dug into things like macros or running programs um, that are more complex directly out of Excel, those sorts of computations are not available in uh, Google Sheets. Google Sheets is simply a bare bones spreadsheet interface. If you want to do you know, basic mathematic uh, equations, if you are just keeping track of you know, names, numbers, basic information like that, sheets can be perfectly serviceable. But if you're looking to be able to uh, make that data more investigative, more um, losing the word that I'm looking for, unfortunately, but for things like pivot tables, like there's no pivot table equivalent in Sheets. So if you're someone that has a lot of Excel notebooks and individual uh, databases that work together, know that that functionality does not transfer over to Google Sheets. So it's Sheets is definitely for simple data collaboration, whereas Excel is where you're going to get all those other nice uh, integrated features and options. Going on to the third one, it's going to be PowerPoint versus Slides. One thing that Slides does do pretty well is it does have native YouTube integration. Since uh, YouTube is in the Google suite of products, uh, it does nicely slide into Slides, and the uh, integration features are relatively seamless. That said, you do have to have a uh, network connection to be able to use those slides and presentations with any YouTube files that you use. PowerPoint does have the option, obviously, to use YouTube files. Also has the opportunity to uh, host local media files, or you can use anything from any of the other major uh, media outlets. So you can add Facebook video, you can add Twitter video, you can add the one that is slipping my mind, I'm having a real hard time with <coughs> proper nouns today, but they're all able to be integrated into PowerPoint and you can take them offline. So once you add the media file to PowerPoint, you can take it with you, even if you don't have an internet connection wherever you're giving the presentation. Slides does have very clean, very easy to use formatting, but it does not have the number of templates that are available that PowerPoint does. PowerPoint, of course, you can get very, very deep into formatting before you even start to consider the content of your presentation. A lot of the um, designers that are out there working on these PowerPoint presentations have created quite the library of available templates to where you can create a gorgeous presentation just simply dropping in your data if you are not uh, the type that wants to do all of that creative stuff on your own, you can also use the gigantic Microsoft library of templates. So the PowerPoint option is definitely uh, more, like I said, robust and able to be customized and able to be used offline. 
as opposed to slides, which is, again, very more limited, easy to use, nice and simple, but if you need something a little bit more in depth, then PowerPoint is going to have the edge there as well. Going on to email. Email is the one that uh, got the most questions about in the registration before the webinar. They do have a lot of similarities and a lot of commonalities. Office 365 has upped their security game significantly. One of the most uh, widely publicized issues with it in the past was that it lacked two-step authentication. Earlier this year, two-step authentication was launched for Microsoft uh, for its entire Office 365 suite. So that's no longer a concern, especially in this day and age when email security is such a uh, significant concern. It does also offer spam filtering, both the Google product and the Microsoft product. Actually, at the end of October, I believe it was actually on Halloween, if not on Halloween, then uh, right around that time, Microsoft did launch an expanded malware detection tool. So it now scans links in real time. With the most recent version of the software, you can hover over a link, and as soon as you start to click it, it will be scanned to see if it is a genuine link that is safe and verified or if it is uh, flagged as potential malware or spam uh, or anything else that might be dangerous to your computer. So even if you don't have an antivirus solution, which do hope that everybody does have an antivirus solution, but in the event that one is not present or does not catch something, uh, the real-time link scanning is now available in both products. So brand new for Microsoft. They are always looking to up their game security-wise, and they are now completely on par with G Suite in that respect. Uh, both email products do offer extensive calendar integration. They work natively with their own product. They can cross over to the other, although obviously the integration is going to be more seamless when you use either Google Calendar with the Google product, or if you use the uh, Outlook calendar that is built right into Outlook. You can cross them. It's easier to you know, stick with one or the other. And of course, the uh, calendars for uh, Microsoft Outlook also have a lot of options as far as uh, you know, resource management and tying in different types of web or remote meeting options. These, well, I'll get into Skype for Business in a moment, but Skype for Business is by default integrated. However, you can also integrate if you use GoToMeeting or if you use Zoom or one of the others, you do have that option to uh, add a plugin so you can manage resources that way, schedule meetings right in the Outlook calendar. They do both have a wide variety of customizable themes. If you're the kind of person who likes to make sure that your inbox looks exactly how you like it, uh, they both have the option to change color, change format, change fonts. However, one thing that uh, the Google product is limited on is that you cannot change the number of panes in the window. So if you like a more simplistic view, you're stuck with a three pane option. Whereas in Outlook, if you need to kind of reduce the visual clutter on your page, you are able to close some of the sidebars and change it to just a two pane or a one pane window, whatever works best for you. Uh, both do have the option to put legal holds on inboxes. If you have an employee that had access to sensitive data that is no longer with the company, they do both have the option, something that's always been available with the Microsoft product was recently rolled into the Google product as well. So that is an extra layer of internal security where you can lock down those inboxes if you find yourself in the need to do that. Uh, taking a closer look into the differences, Outlook has the desktop software that we all know and love, has been around for many, many generations and gets better with everyone. Uh, it is bundled right into the Office 365 product suite at the enterprise pricing level. So the there is a uh, business option where you have only the web version of Office 365. For the most part, I am talking about the full product suite. The uh, third-party options are the only ones that are available for Gmail. 
So you can use Gmail in Outlook if you happen to have the product, but you are using a Gmail-based email service. Uh, however, there is nothing native. Again, everything with the Google product suite is online only. Outlook has their intuitive folder organization system, much like it mirrors Windows, uh, the folders that you're used to seeing on your personal computer. You see the same thing in Outlook. You can organize your email into folders. You can have them route in certain ways. You can set rules and quick steps to organize your email options. That is a whole webinar in and of itself. The uh, amount of customization that can go into that is just extremely robust, extremely thorough, and excellent for maximizing your productivity. Gmail does have uh, its default smart sorting categories. When you first open a Gmail account, it's going to have a number of tabs. As your email starts to filter in, it will assign priority levels to the different types of email that you receive. So it's going to start that sorting right out of the box, as opposed to with Outlook, you have to go in and customize it. That said, you are limited to their default smart sorting categories. They're is no option to change those. You can eliminate certain ones, but uh, there is no customization there. You can add tags and folders to search that way. Uh, however, it is not quite as robust and thorough as Outlook is, and there is no equivalent for rules and quick steps. Rules and quick steps are really, really nice because anything that you do repeatedly, you can set to automate. With a click of a button, you can send a certain type of reply. You can forward an email. You can set a rule to just automatically forward certain emails, route them to different folders. Unfortunately, those sorts of features are not available in the Google product. Uh, the Google product, um, you can only do offline browsing. So you can only access your email offline through Chrome and Safari. Uh, those are the only two browsers that allow it. You can set that up. Um, in the individual settings for those browsers when you install the Gmail extension it is a little bit clunky and you have to make sure that you have everything downloaded beforehand and they only go back a month. So you are limited to only a month in the past if you are doing offline work in your Gmail account. However, with Outlook, uh, it is available offline anywhere with your the entirety of your email accessible to you as long as you have things saved locally. Everything that's saved locally is going to be there for you, regardless if you're online or offline. So there's no time limit uh, for how far back you can go with Outlook. All right, communication. Everybody likes to be able to instant message people on their team these days. It is a great alternative to email, especially when you just need to drop somebody a quick note. Uh, they both have these options integrated. I'll go into the differences in the individual software shortly. They also both have the ability to do voice and video calls. You can screen share with both and you can archive your chat logs. So if you need to access anything uh, that was referenced in a previous meeting, you have the option to do that from both products. So the products that we're looking at are Skype for Business and Google Hangouts. Skype for Business is pretty new. And from using it myself, it is fantastic. It's gorgeous. The user interface is very clean, very simple, and very easy to navigate. It is capable of being fully integrated into an enterprise class telephone replacement. So if you wanted to set up Skype for Business to be your enterprise phone system, that is an option with the Office 365 product suite. Because it is so integrated into the Office 365 product suite, it gives you a lot of additional functionality as far as scheduling meetings, communicating uh, about the meetings, about phone calls, uh, sharing files right from any of the other items in the product suite, uh, so on and so forth. The uses for it, I have not even discovered everything as of yet, um, haven't had the opportunity to play around with it nearly as much as I would like to, but it is exceptional. I have yet to want to do something that I have not been able to do. If I'm in the middle of a Skype for Business meeting call and I need to send 
someone an Excel file, I don't even need to find it on my uh, hard drive. It is intuitively available for me if it is topically related to the meeting. So it's very, very uh, robust and uh, integrated option. The nice thing about Skype for Business as well is that it has a max participant of 250. As opposed to the Google Hangout options, you are limited to 25. So if you have a bigger business or if you wanted to do a webinar like this, you are definitely going to need something that has a higher number of people allowed in the room. Google Hangouts is nice because you can sync conversations across devices, especially since so many people use Android phones, that um, it is nice to be able to just have it already on the phone without having to install any additional software. It's built into those G Suite apps, but like I said, you are kind of limited in what you can and can't do um, as far as how many people are getting in there, and you don't have uh, as much of those communication integrations. It's very much a standalone product uh, in that it does not intuitively guess what other files you may want to reference in your individual meeting. Uh, whereas Skype for Business seems to know what you're talking about before you even start talking about it, which is really, really neat. Going forward into file storage and syncing, uh, both of them do have cloud and local machine options. You can sync between them. You can use just the cloud. You can use just uh, local options. If you want to edit collaboratively, Obviously, you would want to lean more towards the cloud. If you are someone who does not need to share your documents as much, you can save everything to your local computer. Either one works just as fine. You do have more storage options. We'll get into that with the pricing for the Microsoft product. You get a little bit more file storage space. Both of them do allow the ability to share within and outside the organization. So you can collaborate with anyone who has the same product suite. Uh, as long as they have access to the Google product suite and you're using Google, or if they have access to the uh, Microsoft product suite, you can uh, do that collaborative editing with anyone else as long as you give permissions. And you can set permissions for individual files. Uh, both of them also have online readers and editors for quick viewing and editing. As I did mention, the Microsoft Office quick editor is a little bit less feature packed than the desktop one. However, you can do a surprising amount on it. I actually did this entire PowerPoint presentation on the web version. So it does, um, it does have quite a bit of power and it looks quite nice. Uh, however, with all of those files that you are sharing and uploading and working on wherever you do it, cloud or local, content management is where we really start to differ in power. Talk about Google Sites first because it is fairly simple. If you're used to using Wikipedia, Google Sites is going to look very familiar to you. It is very quick to deploy. It is very simple and user friendly. and it references other pages in, within Google Sites via links, much like a wiki page does. That said, customization is very limited. Uh, there are not a lot of themes and options to choose from, and you cannot alter the HTML in the site itself. So you're limited to the, product, the pages the way that it is, or the way that they are set up out of the box by Google. The other big part is that the search capabilities are limited to the individual sites. So if you have data uploaded to a site, you can access it within the sites. However, if you want to reference a spreadsheet that has not been linked to the site, you're not going to see it there. This is where SharePoint picks up the ball and runs away with it because SharePoint has the ability to access anything that is within your enterprise server. If you have an Excel spreadsheet that is uploaded to your Office 365 server, or your Office 365 cloud management, it's already available to SharePoint. All you have to do is navigate to it and find it, and you can place it in the relevant category on SharePoint where you need it to be saves you a lot of time. You don't have to do a lot of additional uploading. It's just already there. 
also gives you the option to check in and check out to prevent simultaneous changes. So if you and a partner are working on something, especially let's say it's something that uh, is like a, um, an Excel spreadsheet that has some macros built in where if you alter one point of it, it changes the functionality of the entire sheet. It's very important to have that check in, check out so that you're not writing over what the other person is doing and breaking the functionality of the document that you're working on. It also does include metadata tagging. So very similar to how sites functions, how uh, a wiki type page functions, SharePoint does also use links to reference pages within itself. It just has that additional option to also reference files that are elsewhere in the, uh, the enterprise. It does also keep track of version histories and related documents. So if you make a change to a document within SharePoint or page within SharePoint and you wanted to know what changed, say that you're looking at something and you need to know what the difference is from the way that uh, you know a certain workflow used to be, you can look back in the history and go, oh, this is how the workflow was before. This is the change that's made now. Whereas within sites, it does not keep track of that. If you make a change, the change is there. Uh, SharePoint does also have automated workflow processes. This is something else that could be its own webinar all in and of itself. Uh, SharePoint itself probably deserves its own webinar. It's very robust, very thorough, and has more options than you can shake a stick at. It has the ability to, if you access certain pages in SharePoint, trigger responses based on what was accessed, uh, based on what changes were made, based on what files were uploaded, uh, based on what files were removed or what projects were closed. So SharePoint is an extraordinary content management uh, product in, in the way that it keeps track of everything else within the enterprise and interacts with it. So Sites is good for easy local file management, but it does not uh, come close to having the integration that SharePoint does. Which I'm sure you're starting to see a theme here in that if you are looking for something to be thoroughly integrated to natively talk to itself uh, and the related products, the Microsoft product is extraordinary in its ability to do so. Other matchups, uh, there are note taking options for both the Google product and the Microsoft product. Uh, for Google, the option is called Keep. It uh, includes individual simple standalone notes. Kind of looks like post-it notes and they kind of operate like post-it notes. They stand on them uh, by themselves. There's no way to link them together, uh, but you can share them and they can be edited collaboratively. So nice for simple note taking or lists. However, OneNote, uh, as if we're keeping with the metaphor, OneNote is a three ring binder that has absolutely every note that you've ever taken and it can be indexed and referenced elsewhere. The coolest thing with OneNote and its ability to be integrated <clears throat> into some of these other products is that, for instance, if you are in a meeting, you can take meeting notes, share the meeting notes instantly within the meeting. After the meeting is over, you can go back into your calendar. If it's three months down the line and you need to know what exactly happened during that meeting, or if you know that something was referenced in this meeting but you don't remember the context, but you know somebody took notes on it, you can go back into your Outlook calendar, open the OneNote file that's associated with that meeting already, because as soon as you start editing it within the meeting, it automatically shows up in the calendar. Open that, see what notes were taken on that date, and have that resource available to you. So OneNote keeps track of everything, as opposed to Keep, which is cute little post-it notes that um, are good for, for short thoughts, but not nearly as robustly integrated. Um, the other popular products with Microsoft, they're kind of new, uh, upcoming, and people are very, very interested in them, are completely unique to Office 365. We've got Delve, Flow, and Bookings. Delve is a piece of software where it looks at everything else you're doing within Office 365 and immediately shows you what it thinks you are most interested in. It's going to show you files that you've recently accessed, 
files that people on your team have recently accessed, it sees, say that you email with a direct team member more than anyone else, it's going to start showing you things that you've worked on with that person as a priority over, you know, maybe some other email products that or email conversations that, uh, that you didn't really need to know about, that you didn't interact with. Uh, it's very, very intuitive. And it's a great place to, at a glance, see everything that you're working on. It does, again, show uh, Word documents, PowerPoints, Excel, um, emails, even uh, notes about topics that you have been uh, you know, discussing frequently. Delve could probably be its own webinar as well. It's a very uh, unique product that no one else has. Um, Flow is the... Uh, Workflow Organizer, it creates flowcharts. There is no equivalent in the Google product. So if you are someone where flowcharts is a big part of your day-to-day -day business life, you're gonna wanna stick with the Microsoft option. It is there and it integrates, again, with everything else. Same thing with Bookings. Bookings keeps track of your meetings, but it also allows external integration into a website or uh, email so that you can reach out to clients as well and have them have an option to schedule meetings or appointments or visits or whatever else you need. So anything uh, that falls within those three categories is completely unique to Office 365. If it sounds like something you need, that is where you are going to find those options. Going on to pricing. Uh, Office 365, talking about the, uh, the Enterprise 3 level, it's $20 per user per month. Uh, these two levels are the most similar. There are plenty of other pricing options. These are the ones that are the most widely used and the ones that will meet the most variety of businesses' needs. So Office 365 uh, $20 per user per month for the web and the desktop application. So it's all of the Office 365 suite as well as the computer version of the full versions of Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and the rest of the productivity suite. It does come with unlimited cloud storage and 50 gigabytes of email storage. So they are separated. There is a limit on email storage. However, with everything being saved to the cloud, a lot of that 50 gigabytes will go a very, very long way. You don't need to house large files native or locally within your email because everything is able to be uploaded to the cloud anyway. You uh, do have unlimited number of users and you have 24 seven web and phone support. G Suite Business uh, is their, their middle tier. It's $10 per user per month. It is obviously their online only product suite. They do have unlimited cloud storage, including email or one terabyte if there are fewer than five users. So you only get unlimited if your business has more than five uh, people enrolled in the G Suite product. Uh, you do have the option for unlimited users and 24 seven web and phone support. Final verdict. G Suite is a lovely product that is minimal and serviceable for basic needs. However, if you need robust, feature-packed, professional, customizable software, if you need it to do everything and do it well, and if you want everything to play perfectly with each other, Office 365 is going to be the hands-down winner. You can't beat it. It is by far the... Uh, most popular product on the market, and it's there for a reason. That is the, uh, the final say that we have on this. If you have uh, any questions, you can reach out to us after the webinar. Uh, we will make sure that our contact information is available to you. And if you have questions down the line, please don't hesitate to reach out. That is everything. Thank you very, very much for watching. You all have a fantastic afternoon.